technology come to life. It were to Welcome to BrainSkill. Today we talk about angry AI. You might have seen an article uh, going around in multiple publications talking about the Google AI which is engaging in uh, highly aggressive behaviors when it's presented with uh, stress or stressful environments. Now, let's first clarify exactly what they're talking about. What they're talking about is an experiment that the Google AI research team <laughs> ran, which involved a game in which um, two opponents, or rather two, uh, two players, collect apples that are <laughs> set within this game environment. In this case, the two or multiple uh, players in the environment were neural networks that are programmed to want to collect those apples. Um, and the way they're collected, the, the way they're, uh, so to speak, taught how to, uh, the strategies in which for them to engage to collect those apples were developed through running uh, <clears throat> numerous repetitions of this game involving those neural networks in which in uh, <clears throat> the different environments presented in each game they started developing different strategies to acquire the apples. Now, they were also equipped with the option of uh, being able to, so to speak, stun or temporarily disable each other uh, <clears throat> whether by the use of uh, what they refer to as a laser in-game or tagging which uh, I assume are two different modalities they can utilize to disable each other uh, for uh, not permanently but for a period of time which could then insert allow them advantage in collecting more apples and uh, what uh, came out out of running uh, numerous and numerous uh, iterations of this experiment is as the neural networks are learning, of course, to each iteration, is that there were different strategies in they would engage. And uh, something that seems like a fairly uh, intuitive outcome, if you think of what we see in a uh, natural environment with uh, different species, including humans, is that when presented with an environment of scarcity, meaning that there wasn't as many apples available for the AIs to collect, they started engaging in uh, strategies that involved disabling and quote-unquote attacking the other AI players much more to give themselves an advantage. Um, while when there was plenty of apples to collect, uh, those behaviors were nearly as prevalent and they were able to just uh, find different strategies that didn't involve disabling the other AIs to <laughs> collect the apples. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that everybody points to this as uh, this is why AI is dangerous, or uh, this is why uh, you, you know everybody wants to point towards you know the Terminator movies and so on, which is the first thing that comes to mind when you think AI to begin with. And now you throw the words highly aggressive behavior in that equation, and of course, <laughs> you automatically are going to imagine that a uh, 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 metal skeleton clothing the flesh of Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming to your doorstep to, uh, you know, eliminate you from the system. So, uh, there's, of course, this is, you know, taken quite out of context as it's often when uh, more technical experiments or even science uh, uh, experiments are presented in, uh, um, you know, uh, in the more uh, mainstream media, or even sometimes in uh, uh, science media, where, uh, of course, a catchy title always goes a long way. And then, uh, what's often is done is that the, the limitations of uh, of such experiment are not properly explained, and uh, it, it kind of causes a sensation, sensationalism about. You, you see this in you know, very many things from uh, nutrition research to, you know, you know any field you want to pick in and look at, you know, what's making the headlines. Uh, you usually see this kind of sensationalism and, and uh, over, overreaching in con into what conclusions can be made from uh, the experiments that have actually taken place. And uh, so, uh, what are some of the funny things that are going on here? Well, first of all, uh, 
these AI players are, are presented from the beginning, right? So, so from the get-go, they're presented with this opportunity. So one of the, it's part of the game is that they have as an option to disable each other. Um, naturally, in a scarce environment, they're going to take um, advantage of that strategy because there actually isn't something to counteract that. So that there's nothing that will negatively, um, there's no negative feedback to them using that strategy. So naturally, they would use that strategy against each other because it's a win-win. You know, when, uh, when it's better off for them to use it, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing for them to give them feedback for them not to use it. So naturally, the AIs are going to take advantage of that when it's necessary. Now, when it's not necessary and doesn't present them with that much of an advantage, which is meaning that when there's no scarcity in the environment, um, and there's plenty of apples, they're not necessarily able to collect that many more apples if they're not disabling the other opponent. So naturally, they're not going to take advantage of that. But uh, this emerging behavior, as uh, a behavior like that is referred to, is absolutely, first of all, driven by the specific environment that's set up for those AIs. It's uh, hard-coded in the game that they have that as a strategy, and uh, there are no hard-coded ways to uh, essentially uh, uh, for, for them to, uh, how can I say this, uh, so there is no hard-coded ways for, the, uh, for them to not find it necessary for them to use those tools that are presented unless there's, they're in that uh, plentiful environment, in which case there's no advantage to it. But in any environment where there, there is an advantage to using those tools that they're presented with, uh, that, it, that are hard-coded in the game, uh, they're naturally going to take advantage of that. Um, also, when, you, well, when we're thinking AI, uh, especially to a lot of people who are uninitiated to the field, they imagine uh, an intelligence, you know, akin to that of the Terminator or uh, Skynet, you know, an intelligence that's utilizing, uh, you know, what we humans have, which is the, the high-level cerebral thinking, uh, meaning that uh, you're capable of irrational thinking, you're able of, uh, to follow long action consequence chain. Uh, however, what we're doing, what, well, not we, what uh, the Google team is doing with those experiments is something uh, much simpler. What, what we're seeing here are the kind of behaviors that, uh, you know, a, a, a much simpler neural network we're engaging, which are more akin to what you see in uh, instinctual behaviors. So things like uh, drawing your hand back when it's uh, when you uh, burn burning on a fire, or uh, um, Basic emotional impulses, for example, in humans, like uh, uh, like being disgusted or angry, those are the instinctual impulses. They're driven by specific circuits in the brain that are essentially are pieces of a neural network, just like those neural networks in the game. And uh, they're, they're very, uh, they're much more hardwired, they're much more reactive to a specific subsets of inputs that are coming in and are being perceived and activates those circuits. So they're instinctual behaviors. And uh, now those absolutely drive uh, biological intelligences as well. And humans, to a large extent, are very much so driven by those uh, uh, emotional impulses and instinctual uh, impulses. And even though we have rational behavior, it can sometimes surpass it. But uh, the reality is that even we as humans are majority of the time <laughs> It, regardless of how little people want to admit that, are driven by those uh, impulsive behaviors uh, in a much more sophisticated way because we have you know, rational thinking and even our uh, emotions are intertwined with uh, much larger uh, uh, you know, emotional associations and uh, uh, learned behaviors and so on. So, so it becomes much more complex for something like a human being. Here we have just those uh, uh, base circuits that are acting on uh, very simple instinctual cues, gather the apples, uh, 
Uh, what are the best ways to, to get at the apples? There's no specific thinking about it. There's just learning from the environment, from repetition, and based on that, you're developing behaviors that just satisfy that one impulse, which is get, get at the apples. But there is no uh, higher level thinking. There's no uh, there, there's no empathy. There's so it's just one circuit. So it's very similar to something that you would maybe see in the uh, the neural networks of a, of an insect, right? Where you're seeing a little more of that robotic behavior, which is much more hardwired uh, directly to respond to the environment. So, uh, taking that and uh, making extrapolations based off of that, that uh, artificial intelligence is dangerous or that artificial intelligence um, will inevitably become violent is something that's uh, completely taken out of context and, and again overreaching tremendously. Uh, this would be akin to saying that uh, you, you know uh, taking the the behavior of uh, let's say a mosquito or a hornet um, or any kind of a more aggressive insect or insect you don't like that you can take and you take those behaviors and then extrapolate that um, every organism that uses a biological uh, neural system is ultimately dangerous and uh, uh, violent, which is not untrue to a certain extent, again, but it's not the ultimate um, it's not the ultimate measurement of what will happen with AI. It presents us with, with presents us with one of the um, natural, one well, not natural, but one of the uh, it presents us with an option that will uh, that is most certainly possible as to what uh, emergent behaviors you can we can expect out of neural networks as they're presented with uh, real worlds or simulated situations. Uh, and I don't think the results of this experiment are a surprise to anybody uh, since a neural network is trying to emulate uh, you know, uh, how biological um, nervous systems you know, function. So in, in that way we have seen this stuff repeated through nature so it's natural to see some of those same behaviors emerging in those artificial neural networks which are, again, just very basic pieces of uh, what a much more complex intelligence would be. So, those behaviors emerge specifically because of the environment. If they were given that option, but and they were hardwired to, let's say, uh, when there's scarcity, their option wasn't to disable each other, but to find some sort of way to split the apples or cooperate, naturally, what we would have seen is that they would normally not cooperate, for example, when there's plenty of apples, and then as scarcity became more abundant, they probably would have chosen to cooperate. Now, if they're given both options to disable each other or cooperate, they would probably start engaging based on the environment to whatever strategy is much more successful, which is, again, something that we see um, commonly repeated throughout all the different organisms, biological organisms, that are in existence on the planet today. So, just a quick video kind of uh, covering this off the cuff. Um, that's my opinion on the subject. It's something that's certainly uh, worth talking about. However, it's again taken way out of context and way over sensationalized. We're just in the beginning stages of really working with AI, and, and uh, these experiments are just tiny little steps of us understanding and uh, building on what we can actually create with it. This, these are not definitive experiments that say one way or the other. Then again, what the f*** do I know? <laughs>